I'm not sure the cat can share it. So if this had been an equal sign, you guys would have just started doing the same exact steps. It's the same as what we've been doing up until this point, except with an inequality, once we subtract the 45, then we're gonna divide by the two and we end up with X is greater than eight. Now, our answer has to include a graph because we like to show that with an inequality, it's not just one answer. It's any number that's greater than eight would satisfy this inequality. Before I graph it, I wanna make sure that the, the variable's on the left side. I'm gonna circle the number that the variable is greater than or less than, in this case it's greater than. Make sure I know if it's an open or closed circle, and in this case it is open. And which direction is the line going? Right. That saying eight will not make this true. But anything bigger than eight will make it true, including 8.1, right? Anything bigger than eight is gonna make this true. Let's try something a little bit more challenging. I'd like you guys to write down two minus negative 10 is greater than negative four y. What do I have here that's invisible? Mm -hmm. So my first step with this, I like to make them visible. I'm a visual person and if I don't, I forget that I need to multiply. Negative one times negative 10 would be and I'm gonna bring down the two and the inequality. Everything else stays the same. Then I'm gonna combine like terms. Two plus 10 is 12. 12 is greater than negative four, why? We're gonna divide by what? And what is our golden rule of inequalities? As soon as I'm dividing or multiplying by a negative, the symbol flips. So we're gonna divide by negative four and we end up with negative three is less than y. But you have to flip it again. I have to flip it again. Oh, why do we have to do that? We have why to do it do because we, do we want the y to be on the left side. So now y is greater than negative three. But why? But why though? There are so many places to have small mistakes happen. As you guys saw when I was going through the homework with you, I left off that or equal to. You have to be careful that when you're flipping things, you're keeping track of things, and that you're not losing parts of this. Question? Um, when you divide it by the negative four, why did you put the signs? Were you not here the day we did that foldable? I was watching the video, so that was actually Okay. Um, let me come up with a good example to show why. Why? Okay. Why? In a moment. Right now, though, I want to finish this by graphing it. <coughs> I'm going to put negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. I just want a quick snapshot of this graph. Zooming in, it's an open circle going to the right. I will come back to the why we do it, okay, Faith? Let's try another problem. Negative four times parentheses two minus x is less than or equal to eight. What's my first step here? I could distribute it, or I could divide by the negative four. We could do it both ways. Let's do it both ways, just so you see that it turns out the same. When I see this, my first thought is distribute that negative four. Then I get negative eight, oops, as I'm writing the wrong number, plus four x is less than or equal to eight. And then we're gonna add the eight to both sides to cancel it over here. We end up with four x is less than or equal to 16. And I'm going to divide by? Four. 
and then you get four. And I get x is less than or equal to four. What if I divided this by the negative four first? Then I wouldn't have to distribute it, and I'm not going to end up with that four x. If I divide negative four, first of all, I'm dividing by a negative, so I'm going to have to flip my symbol. On the left side, I'm going to be left with 2 minus x. And on the right side, I'm going to be left with negative 2. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Negative x is less than or equal to negative 4. We're not finished yet, though, are we? Divide by negative 1 means I have to flip that symbol again. Ended up with the same answer. This one's more work, but sometimes dividing by the number instead of distributing it can be less work. In this case, it wasn't, but I wanted to show you you can do it both ways. And I'm going to graph it here just really quickly. 3, 4, 5. It's going to be a filled in circle, and the line is going to go to the left. Okay, I'd like us to do one more example before I give you guys some work to do. And it involves fractions 2 thirds x plus 1 half is greater than 1 third. If I wanted to get rid of the denominators, I could multiply the whole thing by what the common denominator would be. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, there were some mistakes when we did this method last time where people only multiplied this by the first fraction. You have to do it to all parts. So this is going to get distributed. 6 times 2 is 12 divided by 3 would be 4x. 6 times 1 divided by 2. So 4x plus 3 is greater than 2. Subtract 3 from both sides. I'm running out of room. 4x is greater than negative 1. I'm going to divide by 4. And so x is going to be greater than negative 1 over 4. My symbol is not flipping because I didn't divide by the negative. I divided by a positive. To graph that, we just need to put in here 1 and 2. Where is, oh, 0, 1, and 2, sorry. Where is 1 fourth going to, it's a negative 1 fourth. This is why I should do my work in pencil. Starting my graph over. I'm going to put negative 1, 0. Negative 1 fourth is going to be closer to the 0. If I look at this, I'm thinking this is right about halfway, so this must be right about a fourth. And it's going to be what kind of circle? Open. Open and going to the right. Okay. It's pretty messy, but. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze over here what the work is. And then I'll get back to the question of why the golden rule is the golden rule. Page 193, you guys are doing numbers 1 through 14, and then 16 to 23. <laughs> Okay. I know. So, 
let's get back to the question of why the golden rule is the golden rule. You don't need to write this. Okay, I have a greater than symbol here. If I'm saying that 8 is greater than 6, that's a true statement, yes? What if both of those numbers got divided by a negative 1? <laughs> if I divide both of these by negative 1, I end up with negative 8 and? Negative 6. Can the symbol stay the same? Keep change flip. It's not keep change flip. That's something else. But why is my symbol having to flip if I've multiplied them or divided by a negative? This is now a larger number because it's closer to zero. So the symbol does what? That's happening even if we have something that's like negative x is less. Oops, I didn't flip it either. Negative x is less than 4. If that's a negative right now, we have to divide it by negative 1. That would then make this x and this negative 4. What has to happen then with the symbol? It also has to flip. It's not as easy to see it when we're dealing with a variable because we, we're not thinking in numbers there. But when you see it with actual numbers, you see what's happening. Right? 8 is further away from 0, but when it's a negative 8, that means that the negative 6 is larger. Okay? So that's why the golden rule is what it is. 